This is going to be a video looking at the impact of IFRS 16 on key valuation and leverage multiples, focusing in on net debt to EBITDA and then also EV to EBITDA. Now, IFRS 16 is just an accounting standard, but it impacted the way debt and EBITDA were calculated. That means the valuation multiples on a pre and post IFRS 16 basis are different. Now, that difference needs to be adjusted for. Fundamentally, IFRS 16 hasn't made companies more levered. It hasn't made it us higher. It's just impacted the way we calculate those numbers. Adjusting for the change is particularly important if the analysis you're doing is on a long term basis. In that case, you're almost certainly using data that is both pre and post IFRS 16. In any financial analysis, you want to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. That's the driving motivation behind our adjustments. It's also still common for companies to report pre IFRS 16 numbers in their investor presentations. So it's important to be able to bridge between these two numbers. Now, a brief history lesson on where we started. Pre IFRS 16, leases could be classified in one of two ways. They were either a financing lease or an operating lease. The key question that determined this classification was where the risk and reward of ownership lay. A long term lease where you would ultimately have the asset for most of its useful lifetime was more likely to be classified as a financing lease and a shorter term lease where you only owned an asset for a fraction of its useful life was more likely to be classified as an operating lease. The classification mattered because it impacted how the leases were recorded through the financial statements. Financing leases made it onto the balance sheet and there was a proper obligation, i.e. a liability, against the payments, and you also recorded a right of use asset. The same wasn't true for an operating lease. For that, there was no balance sheet impact with no debt account and no asset recorded. The two leases also had different treatment through the income statements. Financing leases saw depreciation and an interest payment, whereas for operating leases, all lease expenditure just passed through one line in the income statement as a component of operating expenditure. Now, if you package all of that together, companies were motivated to try and cram as much as they could into operating leases. It lowered debt as there was no balance sheet impact, and it also acted to flatter return metrics, like the return on assets and the return on equity for the same reasons. Overall, it wasn't particularly transparent, so the re regulator came along and banned it. Operating leases are no longer a thing under IFRS 16. Instead, we now have financing leases only. Now that transition impacts a company's financials. Moving leases from operating to financing leases impacts debt and EBITDA. And over the next few slides, we'll go through how those movements could ultimately impact the net debt to EBITDA multiple. Let's start with some basic definitions and we're going to focus on the net debt to EBITDA example. Pre IFRS 16, net debt to EBITDA is simple. We just have our borrowings less cash to calculate the net debt. And then the denominator of the expression on the, on the bottom is the derivation of EBITDA. So we start at revenue, we take out our cost of goods sold to get to a gross profit, and then we take out our operating expenses to get to an operating profit or an EBIT number. And then to that, we add back DNA to get to our EBITDA number. If we look at the changes post IFRS 16, net debt now includes leases. Our lease liability obligations are recorded on the balance sheet. So your net debt number goes up. On the denominator, previously all lease expenses were recorded as operating expenses. Now IFRS 16 takes those expenses out of the operating line and now they feed through below the EBIT line as an interest expense. That means operating expenses go down and therefore EBIT goes up. Because you're also bringing the asset onto the balance sheet, you also have depreciation. So your depreciation charge also goes up. Putting all that together means EBITDA goes up. Now, which one goes up by more, net debt or EBITDA, is ultimately going to be company specific. There isn't a rule for that. The key point is really that the pre and post IFRS 16 numbers are not going to be the same. So if you're looking at companies leveraged today versus 10 years ago, you need to make sure you're doing that on a like for like or apples to apples comparison. Hopefully it's now clear how this would also impact EV to EBITDA. 
The impact to EBITDA is exactly as we've discussed in this example, but as enterprise value considers net debt, exactly what you include within net debt is going to impact that number as well. And consequently, your enterprise value is different on a pre or post IFRS 16 basis. If you want to learn more on how to model lease liabilities through through the financial statements, check out the link in the in this video, which will take you to a tutorial on that. But that's all for this. Um, I hope you found it useful.